First of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for putting all the efforts into this virtual conference. Since the discovery of HRTAL, it has been revealed that the majority of disks possess annular substructures or rings and gaps. The formation of these rings is under lively debate, and in this talk, I will present our recent results on that magnetic fields can naturally induce annular substructures in the outer part of the disk. And this work has done with Xuanning Bai from Tsinghua University. There is extensive literature on the mechanisms to explain the ring-like substructures. They can be generally divided into two categories depending on whether there's a planet embedded in the disk. The most popular explanation is planet-disk interaction, where a sufficiently massive planet can carve a gap in the vicinity of the planet, and the properties of the gap depends on planet mass as well as disk properties. While planet-disk interaction can explain most observations, it remains to understand how planets form at the first place. The other category is planet free, and these rings may potentially be in the best place of planets. They could be further divided into a few subcategories, such as condensation fronts, which mark a transition of dust properties. There's also dust assisted instabilities. And finally, the rings and the gaps can be induced by magnetically driven zonal flows, which is the focus of this talk. The formation of ring-like structures requires redistribution of disk mass from a smooth profile. The redistribution of mass requires angular momentum transport in the disk to be non-smooth, and this is linked to the specific mechanism that transport angular momentum. We know in, in protoplanetary disks, angular momentum transport is dominated by magnetic fields. If the angular momentum transport is not smooth, subsequently disk substructures can be formed. In the outer part of the disk, transport of angular momentum generally due to the MRI or magnetized disk wings or a combination of both, which is mainly determined by the ionization level. In all cases, it is required that a large scale net vertical field to be threaded in the disk and the efficiency of angular momentum transport depends on the strength of the net vertical field. So the zonal flows are initially identified by Johansson in their local sharing box IDMG simulations of the MI without net BZ or with weak BZ, they find the level of pressure variation is less than about 10%. When there's net BZ, the level of pressure variation is amplified to about 30%, and the variation of pressure is closely related to the concentration of magnetic flux. In this plot, I'm showing a space-time diagram of density and vertical magnetic field for the stratified string box simulation. The x-axis uh, is time in orbits and the y-axis is radius. It can be clearly seen that the disk evolves into high contrast density variations. In the bottom panel, I show the evolution of vertical magnetic field. You can see that two magnetic sheets are formed at low density regions, while high density regions are almost devoid of vertical magnetic flux. Forming the gap is natural because when there is stronger BZ, the disk will launch stronger MHD wings that more efficiently deplete the gas locally. Early studies of the zonal uh, flows are local simulations and they can suffer from various artifacts. So to study this self consistently, they have to go for global simulations. Recent 2D and 3D global simulations with amicolor diffusion have also identified zonal flows or the rings and the gaps structures. Their results are consistent with each other, where they find the strong vertical field is associated to low densities though different mechanisms are suggested to explain the formation of these ring-like substructures. Previous numerical studies of the MI with an polar diffusion conducted in 3D showing box simulations show that we have to reach a resolution of 32 cells per age to well resolve the MI. Local showing box simulations can achieve such high resolution. However, this coin suffer from symmetry issues because in local simulations, it does not know which way is radially inward or outward. Consequently, winds tend to exhibit odd symmetry, bending towards different directions above and below the midplane. This is not physical and it does not transport angular momentum. 
in real disks, Wayne's shield propagate away from the central star on both sides, corresponding to even symmetry. This issue is generally resolved in global simulations. However, the, re uh, the resolution solution of existing global simulation is far away from resolving MI, and it is unclear whether the results, including formation of magnetic flux concentration, are robust or not. So this motivates us to conduct global simulations with fine resolution to resolve the MI turbulence and to study magnetic flux concentration. We use SNL++ code to form 3D global simulations by taking advantage of static mesh refinement. We achieve a resolution of 32 cells per age in the midplane and 16 cells per age in the azimuth direction. In reaching such high resolution, we only simulate a value of the sphere with phi extending from 0 to pi over 4. Since we are working on the outer part of the disk, ampolar diffusion is dominant 9 DMHG effect, and we parameterize it by ampolar assessor number AM, which is defined by collision of frequency of ions to neutrals divided by the orbital frequency. Another parameter in our simulations is the disk magnetization. Uh, plasma beta defined as the ratio of gas pressure to magnetic pressure of the vertical field. The fiducial value is 10 to the fourth, and all of our simulations are evolved up to 3,000 in orbits. Uh, in this slide, I'm showing um, a movie of our fiducial run. The first column is radio velocity, the second column is beta, uh, is B theta, and you can take it as BZ near the midplane, and the third column is total field. So this quantity is averaged over as much of the direction. As the system evolves, we see the launching of disk wings, and the disk becomes very turbulent. The most intriguing part is that the vertical field develops into discernible and dynamic flux sheets. These sheets are evolving over time, and the overall process is stochastic. Another feature deserves attention is that for toroidal fields, Unlike 2D simulations where B5 reverses polarity at the midplane, generating a thin current layer, there's no current sheet in our 3D simulations because the disk is MI turbulent and the current sheet is destroyed. We examine the turbulent level in the disk, and the plot showing here has a mean square of velocity over sound speed as a function of theta. The turbulent velocity in our simulation Simulations range from 0.01 to 0.1. The stress level, the dimensionless alpha, uh, alpha parameter, is on the order of 10 to the minus 3 to 10 to the minus 2. And it's max stress, a uh, maximum stress that dominates over the uh, overall stress level. We find that strong magnetic field or weak ampullar diffusion will produce strong turbulence. And all of these results are consistent with local showing box simulations. In this slide, I'm showing the evolution of magnetic flux in space-time plots for all of our simulations. The left panels are models for different ambipolar diffusion strands, and on the right panels are models for different disk magnetizations. We see magnetic fluxes are concentrated as disk evolves. Some of them are steady and long-lived, where concentrated fluxes stay where they are over time, while others are rather dynamic. They can emerge or split into several flux sheets. Generally, gas will be depleted where fluxes are concentrated. This holds for all simula simulations with marginal to strong ampullar diffusion. As the flux sheets evolve over time, we then examine how surface density profile varies with magnetic flux. The figure on the top shows surface densities as a, uh, as a function of radius for different parameters at the end of the simulations. Uh, all of these runs show bumps and gaps in surface density with characteristic separation greater than 3H. Important panel is the um, space time plot of surface density for our fiducial run, and we see the development and the evolution of density variations. Essentially, the formation of substructures structures is stochastic, but they show qualitatively similar features. In the last slide, I would like to talk on the possible mechanisms that induce magnetic flux concentration seen in our simulations. 
of bions, stones just did a mechanism that relies on the MI channel modes that stretch the initial vertical field towards opposite radio and azimuth directions. As fields of opposite signs get stretched, reconnection occurs and form two magnetic loops on each side. In this way, mass initially threaded in the vertical field is extracted by the loop. This scenario can be an explanation to what we have seen in our simulations. As in the movie, there is some evidence that vertical fields are oscillating in a rigid direction. Another scenario proposed by Sri Anna et al. demonstrates that due to the reverse of polarity, polarity of total magnetic field at the midplane, the drives bus equation and drags the vertical field with gas into a pinched configuration. Then the field lines reconnect, reconnect at the midplane, forming magnetic loops and carrying mass away. We do not identify this pinched configuration and the hands cannot confirm this scenario. We attribute this to their lack of resolution to properly resolve the MI. Lastly, Rios et al. Um, uh, recently proposed a winning stability scenario on the assumption that wings have odd symmetry with significant mass loss and that magnet flux evolves according to flux freezing, mass depletion and magnetic flux concentration can form a positive feedback. While these assumptions do not necessarily hold in our simulations, we also consider it to be a plausible mechanism. And I will leave the take home messages here and thanks for listening.